guys, let's talk about India again. <laughs> a question that I get asked all the time in this form or other variations is, what is it really like being a foreigner living in India? And I don't know, I feel like it's a very subjective question because the answer is subjective. I can give my own answer and somebody else's might be different. But in today's video, I'll share with you, I guess, we can talk about my experiences. Before I talk about the good and the bad, I want to say this. Don't fall for the stereotypes that you might see on TV or hear from other people. I want you to go into your time abroad, either traveling or living in India or any country with fresh eyes, with your own research backed, but also with just an open mind because your experience might be different from what everybody else says a place is actually like. And that was my experience for sure. And so for me, living in India was really good. Honestly, it was good, but it was hard at times and it was hard because life was hard. Like I looked at my time in India as I would have looked at my time in the States. It just had this interesting filter of being in another place, which was India. And I mean, if I was stressed in India, I probably would have been stressed here too because that's life. But the first thing I'm gonna mention is lifestyle in general, like adjusting to a new lifestyle is always gonna be hard. But for me, moving to India, it was shocking, but not really shocking. I lived in Morocco before I moved to India, and I think living in Casablanca, Morocco, which is city-like, kind of reminds me of Hyderabad in a lot of different ways as well. The fast-paced life, the streets and different things like that. If you've never lived in a city before, you're gonna find it hard to live in a city in India. If you've never lived in a rural uh, part of your hometown or your state before in America, you're gonna have a hard time living in a rural part of India because that's just not your norm. And that is what adjusting to life honestly is. And for some people it might take a little longer to adjust. And for me, it did not take that long. One thing that I will be honest about is the trash and the hygiene in India and yeah, there's a lot of trash. I actually like flanking where I lived, both entrances, so we had the option to leave our neighborhood one way and also leave our neighborhood another way. Both exits were full of trash every day. And I mean, I got used to it. It wasn't something that I loved to see and it was something I also like trained myself to not pay attention to as much. I definitely like would either ride by in an auto or a car and hold my breath or I would walk because I'd walk to the train and literally walk past heaps of trash. And I mean, that just meant I walked faster, honestly. Something that made me really sad, um, every time or so I would be outside um, walking or, you know, going somewhere in a vehicle were the stray dogs. Honestly, like I have such a heart for animals. I have such a heart for dogs and also poverty. You know, there were quite a few uh, homeless folks that I would see on my walks to the train and just, you know, coming home or or going to a destination. My philosophy when I travel is to go somewhere and leave it better than I guess I found it and with the poverty, the trash, the stray dogs and things like that in India, I really couldn't do much overall to change like the larger scale of what that looked like. But things that I did in fact do, I volunteered. I did in fact give money when I could to the disenfranchised folks and I picked up my own trash. I thought to myself, okay, I could eat this piece of food or whatever, this food with a wrapper and throw it on the ground with all the other trash or I could just pick it up and save it until I find a trash can. I mean, those are the kinds of things that I think about. I'm not necessarily there to change the world and to change habits and lifestyles that have been ingrained forever, but I can do my part and not 
make things worse, if that makes sense. So just being responsible as a citizen of another place, just as I would in America, as well as being a responsible traveler. All right, so full transparency, living in India was a bit chaotic. See, when you first arrive, it is such sensory overload, or at least it could feel that way. But yeah, I mean, it honestly feels like sometimes you're getting hit with a lot all at once. But when it's gone, like during a pandemic, you start to really feel this lack of all of those things. And for me, I just missed it all. I felt like India wasn't India without all of those things. You definitely miss what you take for granted when it's all gone. And that's something that I um, realized. But yeah, all of that is definitely chaotic. And if you're not used to that and not equipped and just like your mindset is not ready to change, you'll probably be upset. <laughs> you'll probably be frustrated uh, more than not, honestly. And it really is a mindset shift and it can be fun, honestly. You believe what you see. And again, if you're being fed all this different information about what India is going to be like, you will see that. And honestly, people moved to India and for, years the things that they thought about india before even moving there definitely impacted their lives about what they were experiencing in the actual country and in particular cities and so i just really tried to tell myself i'm going to experience india for myself because i don't want any of the outside perspectives to tarnish what could be for me and honestly, there were times where people would say things about you know, their lifestyle and uh, living in India and they would be negative and I would internalize those things and maybe sometimes feel the same way. But at the end of the day, it really is about perspective. It really, really is. So let's talk about the good part about living in India. So in my opinion, living in India was never boring. Even during a pandemic, I don't know, I don't get bored easily to begin with, but when things were lively and just popping off, I had a blast living in India and just experiencing everything. Uh, there was always something to do, whether that was like something more local or something more commercial, like going to the movies. Like my husband and I, we would go to the movies before all of the pandemic stuff hit like once every week or so and it was just so much fun the malls are great obviously there are traditional things that you can see and do but you just have to look so going back to chaos i would always coin the term beautifully chaotic or beautifully busy where i lived in hyderabad was always so busy and it was kind of fun to me it was just fun just to see people working and the stalls and people selling their wares and it just was really fun. And when it came to the beautifully busyness of it all, I had my favorite street. I don't know if anybody else has this as an expat or just maybe in your home city where you have like your favorite street that you just love to go down. Even if it's crowded, even if it'll take you an extra five to 10 minutes to get through it all, I loved it so much. It was a street that was not too far away from my house. I could actually walk to it. And at night, in the morning too, but at night in particular, it would just light up, literally light up. And people were selling foods and vegetables and fruits. There were cows that were adorned in decorations. There were people that are just like all over the place and women in their beautiful saris. And it just was always colorful always lively always beautiful you'd hear music and different things like that and if you go back to some of my videos a lot of the outside shots are from that street because every time i would walk or be driven down that area in like an uber or a tuk tuk or something like that there was always something to see every single time and it was just amazing like my favorite street who has a favorite street 
really. Obviously the good comes in the food and I cannot forget the chai. My gosh, I miss chai. But the food was always amazing. Obviously we had Indian food, but then there was like Chinese food and American cuisine and Italian cuisine. And all of it was kind of random and delicious. You could order a lot from the apps like Swiggy and Zomato, but then you could also go to the restaurants and some of them would be like hole in the walls or on top of random buildings that you would just walk up into and it would open up into like a beautiful bar or a beautiful restaurant or something like that. I loved Hyderabad for that, for their hidden gems. And honestly, I felt like Hyderabad was a hidden gem living there and it just started to really develop. And I know that if I were to go back in like a year or two, it's gonna just be booming and good for you. Good for you, Hyderabad. So despite India being India, this is gonna sound a little weird, but I found it to be quite diverse. So Hyderabad just was like a melting pot of a bunch of different cultures and a bunch of different people. And that was really fun to me. I had a lot of Indian friends from different places in India. I learned a lot about Indian culture regarding Hyderabad in particular from my friend John T. Uh, and how the migration process happened from the Mughal period, I believe that's when it was. And it's just such a fascinating story and just the different stories that I heard from my friends as well about their own personal family transitioning to Hyderabad and those that were born in Hyderabad. I mean, I can go on and on, but the diversity of people and people's stories and what people like, it is just fascinating and I think what you think about when you move to a particular place is the place will embody the whole country and that's not true about anywhere. It's not true about America and it's not true about India either and I just, you just have to go into a place with an open mind and be ready to learn and receive.